Warning the following video contains real stories of organized crime. It contains graphic descriptions and mature language. The views and opinions expressed within do not necessarily represent the views and opinions held by Chronicles or its affiliates. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode profiles Chino Kanui of the Arizona AME and the journey into the BOP federal prison system. The Arizona Mexican Mafia has produced hundreds of members in its many decades of existence. Similar to all Mexican prison gangs in the Southwest, the Arizona AME recruits the worst of the worst in our prison system. These elite carnales feel right at home doing time in prison and are very capable of inflicting the necessary damage to enforce their criminal business. Jesse Kanui, also known as Chino, can literally be classified as a one percenter. His propensity for unabated violence was part of his criminal resume. After we were indicted in June of 2003, the airtight case the feds had against us ensured we had signed up for many years in the federal prison system. Entering the Bureau of Prisons, we were introduced to a completely different environment than what we were familiar with in the Arizona Department of Corrections. Our group of Carnales would be the first Arizona Mexican Mafia members in good standing to hit the feds. The previous members to hit the feds were William Big Spider Lopez, Ricardo Buddy Garcia, and Roger Night Owl Gonzalez. These three laid no foundation in the feds and their lack of performance amongst other issues earned them a spot on the Arizona MS Lista, the hit list. Internal Arizona AME politics in the Arizona Department of Corrections was exclusive to Arizona, but the Carnales entering the feds needed clarification regarding our status. Most of the high-level yards were saturated with California AME and Sureño affiliates. So the question at hand was, were we going to be sitting ducks when we hit a prison yard? Were the Arizona Vatos supposed to get off upon arriving at a prison? or what exactly was the relationship with the California Mexican Mafia. The two Cardales who found the answer to this question were co-defendants Joseph Garcia, also known as Big Casper, and Randy Robles, also known as Randy Boy, who hooked up at the Federal Correctional Institution in Phoenix. Big Casper arrived first, sometime in May of 2006, after receiving 210 months for the RICO drug conviction. Randy Boy, part of the same RICO case, arrived shortly thereafter. Big Casper began spreading word that the Arizona AME and Sureños were functioning together. In the absence of a California AME member, we would be considered the big homie, the term used to denote a California Mexican Mafia member. Prison communications like the kite you are viewing ultimately confirmed that California and Arizona were now on the same page and coexisting in the feds with each running their programs. Except for a few exceptions, most of us convicted in the federal drug case were housed apart from each other. Because there are a limited number of high-level prisons in the BOP, the feds attempt to keep co-defendants in separate penitentiaries. In 2009, Chino Kanui was sent to a high-security United States penitentiary known as Cannon USP, where he was serving his drug sentence. The Cannon facility opened in 2005 and was relatively new with only three homicides committed there in its then eight-year history. Remember the East Phoenix laundromat murder of Garfield Garcia in August of 2002? While we were in custody for the federal drug charges, Many of the Carnales, including me, were going out to court on other cases, and Chino was convicted of this murder. I will share more details on this case in an upcoming episode for those of you interested in what took place there. Moving forward to early 2013, Chino was well aware his 11-year federal sentence for the 2003 Emmett drug trafficking charges was scheduled to be completed and his obligation to the feds was coming to a conclusion. Chino's release date was actually scheduled for September of 2013, which meant at that time he would be transferred back to Arizona to begin serving his life sentence for the 2002 murder of Garfield Garcia. For those of you who don't know, doing time in the feds was like going to Disneyland compared to the Arizona Department of Corrections. 
With this in mind as a backdrop, on February 25th, 2013, the news came out of Canon USP that a correctional officer had been brutally attacked and taken out by an inmate. The 34-year-old officer was Eric Williams, who was found stabbed over 200 times. He was kicked, beaten, and stomped inside a high-security prison housing unit. Chino Kanui, with no desire to return to Arizona's SMU-2, decided to pick up a serious charge that would keep him in the federal system. Although Chino's defense told the story of how this officer had disrespected him, thus his supposed motive for the attack, the inner circle grapevine circulated the true reason. Chino had no desire to return to Arizona. Chino was charged with one count of first degree murder, one count of first degree murder of a federal corrections officer and other weapons charges. The unprovoked homicide was captured on prison video surveillance and lasted almost 11 minutes. Members of the federal jury watched the video several times and saw Chino taking breaks to wash a cut on his hands, getting something to drink, and helping himself to a piece of gum found in the dying officer's pocket. He's stomping the officer during the water break, returning to his cell for another shank after the first had broken and, res and resuming the attack. On Thursday, June 8th, Chino Kanui, at the age of 40, was convicted of first-degree murder. After deliberating, one juror held out and refused to vote for the death penalty. The juror who held out, let's just call her juror number seven, was the foreperson of the jury who broke down in tears after five hours of deliberations before admitting to the other jurors that she could not give Jesse Kanui the death penalty. She felt sorry for Jesse Kanui's mother because her own son is in jail, is the reason that she gave. She was quoted as saying, Eric couldn't be brought back and there's enough bad things in the world the way it is and I can't see taking a life. Juror number seven said that they prayed for Officer Williams' family because of the verdict that they were about to deliver and for Eric and for Jesse Kanui's family since that was what the lone juror was concerned about. Juror number seven also cried while watching the video. One of the officers who responded to the crime scene testified Chino told him the reason he attacked Officer Williams was due to a respect issue, but we learned otherwise through our channels. The Arizona Mexican Mafia does not have an ideology or mission statement that promotes violence against police officers, correctional officers, nor are they motivated by racial hatred. In this instance, the murder of a correctional officer, Officer Williams, demonstrates the lack of value for a human life, be it a fellow inmate or a police officer. Someone was destined to be on the receiving end of Chino Kanui's wrath and his plan not to return to Arizona. Officer Eric Williams was unfortunately at the wrong place at the wrong time. Assistant U.S. Attorney Francis Sempa told the jury, Eric Williams was two hours from shift end and going home. He never made it home. Already serving a life sentence for murder, Chino's penalty for murdering a correctional officer was another life sentence. In March 2016, the Eric Williams Correctional Officer Protection Act was passed and became law. It changed Bureau of Prisons policy and allowed correctional officers to carry pepper spray. After Jesse Kanui was sentenced, a petition was initiated to urge lawmakers to make the death penalty automatic for those that murder officers. Ann Russell, who started the petition, said it should be called Eric's Law. As of July 1st, 2020, here's an update of those of us from the Arizona Mexican Mafia convicted on the 2003 RICO drug charges. Little Vinny Garcia is free and loose somewhere in Arizona. Jesse Chino Kanui is doing natural life at the ADX Supermax in Florence, Colorado. Big Casper Garcia is currently in the feds and scheduled to be released in a few months. Mean Jean Lucero was released from the feds. However, he is in state prison till 2027. Jeremy Tyson Worley was released on April 6, 2015. Noel Little Chipas Hakis was freed on February 20, 2015. However, he picked up a new case and is now doing state time. 
and is scheduled to be released in 2023. Noah Wildcat Ganyas was set free December 19, 2013. However, he was picked up by the state of Arizona on a second degree murder and his release date is set for February 2021. I was set free and just recently completed my parole. Paul Pablo Eppinger is in USP Big Sandy doing a double life sentence. Angel Crow Rivera is in USP Victorville doing a double life sentence. In my next episode, we'll begin to touch on individual profiles of Arizona Mexican Mafia members from years past and current members. So stay tuned and thank you for tuning in.